use case 17 as soon as a contact is created share the contact record with all users who are part of the contact innovators public group right so in this use case what we'll be trying to do is we'll be using the contact object and every time a record is created right that's what the event says we'll be sharing this contact record with a public group which is named contact innovators right so this public group can hold as many users as it wants but as soon as the contact is created we need to write a trigger logic that lets these guys who are part of this public group see the record or access it cool so quickly two questions what should be the object it should be contact right and what should be the trigger event it should be the insert scenario but then would you want to go for the before insert or after insert you'd want to go for the after insert right and this is because you are trying to create a related record in this case we are trying to share the contact record now you might not know that uh, every object comes with a share record right so for contact you have something that's called contact underscore underscore share right and this share record can be used to insert uh, to be inserted and the records that are that are inserted as part of this object provide access to this relevant users cool so we'll be using the after insert context because we are trying to create related records for the contact object cool let's jump into the salesforce org and let's start creating this use case so i'll go into contact trigger i believe i already have one let's see if i already have one i'll just say contact trigger i see i have one and the in the event is after insert right so i'll just add this in the event here same old things i'll just put the check for is insert and if it is is after and handle activities after insert right and i'll be using the trigger dot new context because we do not have the trigger dot old in insert scenario right now as soon as i save they should throw me an error that handle after insert is not available right let's go to contact trigger handler and now let's add the method that's called handle after insert this is of the same name i'll just say after insert and say save again this should save up fine and now my trigger should also save up fine cool cool so the base setup is done let's iterate over our records now so i'll be saying for each contact record in new records right now what do i want to do as soon as a record is created i want to share this with a set of people and those that's a set of people which who are part of the public group contact innovators right before jumping into the code let's go ahead and create a public group for ourselves and for now i'll just add myself to this particular group okay and let's just add or let's keep just my user here and i'll say save okay so this is a public group that's called contact innovators which has the api name contact underscore innovators and here i have created this public group with two users inside it right now as soon as a contact record is created these two guys who are part of this group should have access to this contact record right that's our use case so before jumping into the for loop what we want to do is we want to fetch the id of the public group that needs assignment okay or let's do this after i after i reach that point so that you know why am i querying it okay so let's iterate over this loop and now what i want to do is i want to create a share record right now what are share records if i quickly take a look at let's say select id from contact share let's say execute you see this is the share record that comes up with every object okay if you have a standard object it would be named standard object name rather the api name followed by the share keyword okay if it were an object that was custom underscore underscore c then the object would be named custom underscore underscore share that would be the name of the share object okay and what are these share objects they are nothing but they give you a provision to share record the record of the actual object with different users that's what these objects do okay so i'll again query the contact share record okay right now there's no such record because there's no record created yet all right let's do this let's take at the contact share metadata information contact share object salesforce okay so you see this object allows you to determine which users or groups can view or edit contact records and which are owned by other users all right let's open this reference and let's take a look at what are the fields that we need to populate as part of creating this particular object right the very first field is the mandatory field which is nothing but the contact id so that would be the parent right that's the relationship field you need to provide what contact you want to put as the parent for whom you want share records 
right the next thing is contact access level whether you want to provide them read access edit access or all the access that's available right and then down below you can put a row cost that can be one of these values right and there's a different use case for every value but if you want to put a, let's say a manual manual check here it it, it, it means that you are set, setting this particular value from the code right and you can take a look at different values based on what the use case is right and then you have user or group id this tells you what particular set of people should get access now here is where we'll need the public group id or rather the id of the public group contact innovators right to associate so these are the only fields that there exist what i'll be doing next is i'll go to my contact trigger handler i'll say contact share con s equals new contact share and now i'll start populating the values so the the first thing is i want to associate with the contact id which is nothing but the current context record that i have in the picture so that's nothing but con record dot id right so i have associated the parent record which is the contact record in the current context the next thing i want to set is the row cause i'll just say row cause is equal to manual and what's the last thing i want to set the user or group id right i think these are the three things i need if if an error comes we'll we'll try to see what what's the issue now here is where you need your public group id now how do you associate the contact innovators public group here because this accepts an id parameter so what you would want to do is you would want to create a id for the public group and this public group would be nothing but the con innovator public group right and this is where you will be querying your public group you will say select id comma name from group this is the object that you can query and yes you can even query public groups let's take a look here and let's see what does this return this returns a list of groups available right and down below you have one that's called contact innovators so what would i want to do i would want to put a where clause and i'll say where name equals this particular value right here and when now i say execute i get only one record right and this is the id that i want so i'll just put a limit one tag so that i always get one record out of it and i'll go back to my trigger handler i'll say give me this dot id correct this gives you the in uh, the public group id and this is the id that you would want to map here make sense cool let's click on the save button let's see what happens so this is saving up but there are some problems so it's saying so if you see we are getting an error that says field is not writable and that's coming for all the three fields that we currently populated but in order to create a contact share record we have to populate these fields right but this is coming as an error what do we do we take a look at the org wide settings for this object right so we'll go to sharing settings and we'll check what is the basic uh, what is the default internal access for all users for the contact object so you see this is controlled by parent right what i would want to do is i would want to set it to private because if it is already public read write for the parent that means you don't have to create a share record explicitly right so let me try doing this work around and let's set the ownership to private i'll say account and contact would be private and that would also mean that the related child would set, would be set to private right i'll go to contact here and i'll set it to private and i'll say save i'll say okay this says this should also be the same i'll just put it as private and say save okay now this should take some time to recalculate all the sharing rules but once this is done we'll try to save our code again so as soon as you change the sharing settings of any object a sharing operation is initi initiated and what happens is all the sharing rules are recalculated and access is given accordingly uh, all over again to all the users that are currently in the system cool so you see that message has gone away which means the sharing operation is completed let's go ahead and try to refresh it i mean save it one more time let's see if this saves up fine now so you see the errors have gone away so the errors were misleading saying that the field is not writable however the problem was the org wide sharing setting now understand this your org wide sharing setting can be one of the three values it, it can either be private public read only or public read write what do you mean when it is public read write it means that any and everyone can edit your records right and if any and everyone can edit the records why would you want to have a contact share record at all and that's where salesforce is confused why are you trying to create one and it gives you an error don't try to create it it's not writable because it does not make sense the error language is incorrect but yeah that's what's try what it is trying to say right so you'd ha have to have either a private sharing or a public read only sharing right what would that do that would give you an opportunity to create share records and give them more access compared to what they currently have 
that's when sharing comes into picture and that's when you write share records through apex right so now these fields are making sense and i'll just add this share record into a list because i would want to insert them right so i'll just say add record to list dot add and i'll add the con s record which is the share record and i'll just create this list or define this list outside this would be of type list contact share correct looks good so far now i can simply say if this particular list is not empty i would want to insert this list right and as soon as i try to insert it this would give these guys access to the contact record that gets created so i'll say insert add record to list now before jumping into the testing part of it let's quickly see there were four fields right that we had to take a look at let's quickly type in con s and see what's the other field so you see there's one other important field important field that is contact access level we did not define what kind of access do we want to give it right so i'll say read write I'm not sure this is how you write it, but let's try it out. Let's see. I'll just say semicolon and say save. Okay, this has saved up fine, but if the value is incorrect, this will throw an error. Cool. Let's go ahead and test it out. So I'll go to contacts and I'll create one. Okay, let's create a new contact because we have written this on the after insert context. So I'll say sharing contact one, right? And I'll just say save. I don't need any other information for the contact. This gives an error, which means there's an issue with the contact access field. We have we have put in a bad value, right? So let's go to the documentation of contact share object Salesforce and take a look at what are the possible values. See, this is where the metadata API reference helps. You can come back here and you can take a look at what do you want to give. So I'll just say edit. It's not read write. It's basically edit. So I'll just put this string as edit and say save one more time. And now that I save it, and I go back and I try to hit save, let's see if this works. So I see that the contact record is created, which means my transaction has worked successfully. And if I go back here and try to take a look at any share record that's created, let's see, that's one way to see it. So I'll say select ID from contact share and let's say execute. So you see, you see 65 records, which are part right but we need to check where contact id equal to the current contact that we just created right we want to see the share information of this particular contact so i'll just copy the record id here i'll go back to the query and i'll paste it here let's say execute one more time so this gives me two records right and if i take a look at the user or group id and i also put the row cause here you'll see that the row cause is manual so this is the entry that has come from our end and this is the entry that has come from the default creation basically every record that's created the owner has the owner uh, the owner is uh, has the uh, share record for it so that has come as soon as we created the record and this record id points to the contact innovators public group that is what it is do you want to confirm this let's quickly copy this particular id and let's say select id from group where id equals this particular ID right here I'll put the name also and let's say execute so this is the contact innovators so anyone who's part of the contact innovators will have now edit access on the contact record cool fancy scenario right nice so that was all about use case 17 I'll see you in the next one bye